Hello husband and friends, welcome back to another new video. So today I'm going to be telling you and some tips that I've learned over the years and how I cured for my Brazil philodendron. Now she is almost going to be three years old and I'm also doing laundry. So I'm sorry about the background and like I'm losing daylight so I gotta film as soon as I can. So yeah. But yes, this Brazil philodendron I got it at Lowe's almost three years ago and I still remember when I got it. I ended up getting my neon puckles as you guys can see right there. <laughs> when I got my Brazil, I also got her at the same time and my Cebu Blue as well. If you guys would like for me to make another video on how I personally kept my neon photos in Cebu Blue, I can also film that video for you as well, so let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, I'm going to show you guys my Brazil in a bit. She's in the plants room as of now. She is pushing out so much growth and I'm just so excited and I just can't wait to share things that I've learned since I've been looking after her for almost three years. And by the way, I am not an expert whatsoever. I don't know everything. I'm going to give you guys advice on things that I've learned over the years as I've been taking care of my Brazil philodendron. So here's my Brazil philodendron as you guys can see she is pretty long and I ended up taking a lot of pictures on Instagram and this is why I'm making this video because some people wanted me to make a video on how I care for my Brazil and how I got her so long and not so bold on top. It is pushing on your growth which is honestly amazing and the variegation is a lot more brighter than how it was back then as you guys can see. I want to dive into that in a couple minutes on how and why that happens and how you can fix it. But um, yeah, this is my Brazil. She is so gorgeous. I am just so blessed and beyond grateful. There is another one that's called, I believe it's called the Brazil Real. And instead of the yellowish, like limey-ish variegation that you guys are seeing right now, it's white, like cream white. Oh my god, I want that one so bad. It is on my wish list and I am a hunt for it as of now. But this is from Costa Farms. Um, when I bought it, it was in the Costa Farm pot, which majority of all the plants that you buy the big box stores are little from Costa Farms or some other companies as well. But majority is Costa Farms. And um, I, she just makes me so happy. Like, every single year, I cut like three feet, sometimes even four feet length of <laughs> foliage just so I can propagate and I do have some propagations that I would love to share with you guys and also we now have channel membership which is bonus content and a way to support me as well to continue this crazy plant journey so yeah if you would like to get more details on the channel memberships I'll have it linked down below so you guys can go and check it out and yeah so let's just start let's just start I'm talking so much <laughs> alrighty guys so we're in the plant room as of now and as you guys can see that is basically where she rests that's where she stays and as you guys can see there's a, um, a grow light in there because I do get a good amount of light in the plant room but I want the Brazil philodendron to get more light so that's exactly what we're going to talk about right now is lighting requirements so the Brazil philodendron is honestly a pretty great low light plant basically what that means is that it's not gonna uh, fuss like a ficus or a taniki or a hoya or a succulent or a cactus in low light conditions it will literally die but the Brazil philodendron is different it can tolerate it and it's not gonna grow as fast as if you put it in a spot that gets a lot more light indirect of course but um yeah so this plant will do pretty okay in low light conditions you could obviously like give it a grow light to make it grow a little bit faster these are my favorite grow lights as of now and well they've always been my favorite grow lights and if you know me y'all know that i'm literally obsessed with these lights i am not sponsored whatsoever i i mean this this is not sponsored at all i ended up buying these relics with my own money a while back and they're just so good they made my money to grow like crazy my pocket little begonia which is already pushing out a new leaf like i believe in these lights so much and i know how hard it is to find some good ones so i have these linked down below if you guys would like to go and check them out um but yeah these are pretty pretty great and my brazil is obviously doing pretty good i'm like literally putting the phone all over the place to get like different like angles and this looks so pretty like the sun is literally over here these are south facing windows by the way and behind the phone i have two windows these are east facing windows um so yeah but this looks really really pretty uh, other than the fact my neighbors might see me through this and they might think i'm going a little bit crazy because i'm i don't know i just feel like i just feel awkward because i'm like filming by myself Anywho, so now we're gonna go and talk about watering requirements and the reason I have this little guy is I always mention this product a lot because like if you're a beginner or if you had plants for a while I still highly recommend it. It is amazing like this will help you not kill plants. The number one thing that kills plants is over watering because it causes root rot and Lord have mercy, it is so hard to treat root rot like it's almost impossible to cure the plants and bring it back to life and if you can 
you're you have like you're magical like i don't know what's your secrets but it's it's really really hard um i can do another video basically how i treat it is by hydrogen peroxide and some other things that i do as well but watering it so i'm basically dentrine as you guys can see she's over here i let her dry out and the re also like the leaves will wilt which is honestly pretty pretty cool almost like a peace lily but not as dramatic as a peace lily and the nerve plants but the brazil dendron the leaves will start to like wrinkle a little bit and look very like flimsy soft and that's when you know to give it a good bottom watering session that's the way i water my plants or if some people call it butt chug you can also top water your brazil philodendron but i noticed some bottom watering really really does help a lot with my plants and they soak up the water that they want and when you top water you give them the amount of water that you think they need but when you bottom water they absorb what they need and they also store water in the soil so like it literally wicks up the water and they will do pretty pretty good so yeah, so bottom watering using a moisture meter is honestly great. If you do not want to kill your plants, you don't need it at all. You can just use your finger. You can also get like wood sticks that they sell at Dollar Tree for a dollar, put it in the soil, and if there's soil and the stick, then that means it's still wet. So long story short is water your philodendron when it's dry, not bone dry. Let it dry out almost like three-fourths of the way and then give it a good watering session. Um, but yeah, so that's basically how you water your Brazil philodendron. I know that was very long and kind of confusing but i hope it got to the point and i'm trying to give enough details but not too much of it get it okay so i'm gonna go to the next thing which i believe is fertilizer <laughs> already enough fertilizer is pretty basic i use mega grow it works it's affordable it's easy to find it's always in a big box stores like Lowe's, Home Depot, or walmart and they fertilize every single two weeks in the growing season and i also fertilize if i see new growth on my birds of lodendron like every other my house plants and if i don't see no growth then i won't fertilize it but if i do i get a good amount of fertilizer but have diluted and if there is new growth then i give it a good amount of fertilizer and always dilute it i fertilize every single two weeks almost and um i dilute it with water so yeah Alrighty, so now to the fun stuff, which is propagating. So I currently have two propagations going on. Well, they're already rooted, but these are three of the cuttings, uh, well, three plants that I have propagated by nodes. And by the way, that's basically how I propagate all of my potos and philodendrons, especially philodendrons, by the propagation of nodes, which basically is, let me give you an example. So here's a Swiss cheese, a very thirsty Swiss cheese or Arisoniae that is currently getting bottom watered so the leaves don't look so great it's thirsty y'all <laughs> um so basically this is a node and i don't know if it's gonna pull up usually it's like on the bottom of the leaf like of the stem like of this thing and it looks like an elbow to be honest but yeah that's basically how i propagate my plants by nodes and why because some people just cut it and then plop it in water um and just make one plant why do that why do that when you can just cut it from here and then cut each of the nodes and also this can work as well if there's no leaves you can still propagate it now it might not successfully propagate and if you do want to like help a little bit more give it high humidity some warmth and you can also do it by sphagnum moss um i just pop it in soil to be honest but i know some people that exclusively only use sphagnum moss by the propagation box method which is this one i'm currently propagating my um philomycans by nodes this little greenhouse that I got from Taco Cabana. <laughs> it was a bowl and I'm just using it as a little greenhouse and it's kind of cool. I can show you guys the roots. Here is this cute little girl which by the way I will be doing a repotting video on this one and some other plants that need some repotting and it will be the video will be exclusive only for channel memberships. So if you want to see that go and check it out. But um here's another cute little oh my god I'm trying to put it down beautiful new root that's pulling through and um here's another one <laughs> it's just it's so cute ah, this one doesn't have that much this one's really big it needs to get repotted as soon as possible but here it is and this was all by one node and this will be an entire new plant and i don't know if you guys can see that but there's going to be a new leaf that's looking at these this one over here so that's so much fun so yeah you can propagate it by nodes and you can get a lot more plants and more bank out of your buck and you can sell those cuttings give them away or even exchange for other plants and you can get free plants so yeah um here is some of that i've been doing this was i think i did this one oh my god it was a while i think it's like already three months but here it is it's very lush and full and i do have some other ones and these cute 
Coastal Fine Pots because like they're really great for um, bottom watering. They don't have any holes, so I just use them as catch pots. But here's another one, which honestly, it's ready to get like, I, I was gonna sew them, but I don't know if I do want to. Here's another one, looking pretty lush and full as well. So those are the propagations that I have done by my Brazil Pedendron. So yeah, by nodes, and you can use spangle moss, you can put it in water to look at those fun roots. But the thing about when you propagate by water is it's kind of difficult to put water, um, transition it to water to soil. And it might shock the plant and it won't really kill the plant. What might just happen is it might just stop growing for a while because it's shocked and it needs to acclimate and do its thing. So if you do want to propagate your Brazil Pedendron, I just recommend doing it by soil. Just plop it in and then make sure that the soil is moist, not wet. And it also helps if the environment is warm and humid. Kind of warmth is kind of important to be honest so you can buy a heating mat which i don't really buy but if i live like in colder climates then i would highly buy one or i would highly recommend to buy one uh, because if the soil is warmer it does speed up the root growth but that's basically it on how i probably get my brazil philodendron honestly you guys i have my some notes on my computer on google docs that i want to point out as well and some specific numbers because i know like i'm a very specific person so whenever they say humidity I would like a specific number to know <laughs> but usually all tropical plants or aeroids like to maintain within 50 to up to all the way to 80 percent humidity but um i'm gonna just stay in this location it's pretty comfortable just sitting on the floor <laughs> and we can just finish this video but let me go a little bit back because it looks kind of weird on the frame so the next thing is going to be uh humidity so you want to keep your brazil philodendron between 40 to 50 percent humidity uh this plant it's gonna struggle if it's in a really really dry environment the new growth that comes out they might just get stuck sometimes and i don't know if it's this one but there are some plants that struggle to push out new growth if the humidity is really really low uh so you got your majority are home so they're like which one like 40 to 50 percent humidity um my plant room right now is 42 percent humidity that's because i had the windows open all day and it's been really hot and dry outside i'm trying to get all my plants some fresh air because these past days were super super cold and cloudy and I'm kind of panicking a little bit because some plants have stayed moist for a very, very long period of time. And the soil was pretty dry because we didn't have um, our heating unit was broken. But so, <laughs> yeah, you can, uh, I think you call these a thermometer. I'm not so sure. But I think you call these a thermometer. I'm not so sure. But it's this really, really cute little machine. <laughs> I think it's called a thermometer. I'm pretty sure but it tells you the temperature and the humidity i will have this one linked up below there are some other ones that are honestly pretty great and a lot more affordable this one's a little bit more expensive it's like 20 dollars i believe or something like that because it's a little bit more bougie it has bluetooth and it connects to your phone and basically what that's for is if you want it if you're you can just check your phone you can be at work or you can be in your the kitchen and you can check the humidity that's um in your plants and basically in the plant room so for example if i'm like taking a bath and i want to see the humidity or the temperature in the plant room i can just open the app and it will shows me it also shows records um like previous um times on like the humidity and the temperature is pretty great one of my favorite features about this not sponsored by the way um, one of my favorite things about this is that you can set alerts so when it drops a specific like a specific temperature or humidity it will alert you to like hey um it's really really dry in the plant room but basically what i like this a lot but if you want to invest on that i have a lot of plants so humidity is really really important for my plants and also i have a lot of calatheas which if you know they love high humidity but yeah, this uh this is this is great there are there, like i said there are some other cheap ones you don't gotta get this one specifically but it's the one that i'm using right now and it's been doing pretty pretty good so yeah uh you want to keep it to 40 to 50 percent humidity and i know the winter we are currently in winter right now the air is pretty dry but like in the plant room there's so much respiration of humidity just boosts all by itself i do have some humidifiers that i love and i have used so if you would like to go check them out i will have them linked down below as well i'm gonna try to have all these products linked down below I, i'm so bad at putting the links but i'm gonna try my best on this one like i said the brazil it's okay it doesn't need to be like in high humidity like calatheas lord have mercy um but 40 to 50 percent would keep your brazil philodendron happy and one thing that I noticed is because the plant room is really, really humid, sometimes the highest humidity was 95% humidity, which is usually in the night, This the plant room gets around, well, like 70, all the way to like 80% humidity. <laughs> 
and then because i know like it's it can't be so humid because they can develop issues like molds so that's why every single day i try to open the windows and get some fresh air i put the fan on on blast and get some good airflow so my plants will not struggle or develop molds or just some nasty things that we do not want to see which is why you see 50 percent humidity because like i said i usually have this on in the day and just get some good airflow in the plants room now level of difficulty this is honestly a really really easy plant it is a, per a perfect plant to give as a house plant gift now the temperature so the lowest you want to keep here versus philodendron is 60 fahrenheit um that's basically the rule with all the other house plants anything below than 40 per 40 percent oh my god 40 fahrenheit is gonna cause problems to your plants so the lowest you want to keep it at 60 and the highest is 75 i believe the highest is like around 80 or 90 but the comfort spot for the brazil philodendron i do have those numbers is 60 fahrenheit and 75 fahrenheit so between those two numbers your plants will be pretty happy i want to keep it in the 70s though that's what that's what i like to keep my plants at another rule of thumb is this plant is toxic to pets and you so you do not want to um ingest this plant at all so yeah make sure you keep it away from like little kids or um hungry animals i'm <laughs> just kidding but <laughs> like your dogs or cats because it's toxic it's enough now some additional stuff that i want to share with y'all is honestly if you stick around to the end of the video hey oh my god <laughs> this is some good tips that i you know you deserve to like know basically is sometimes with philodendrons they get bold on top like on the top of the plant you might start losing some leaves for example here is um i don't see a yellow leaf in here but you will start losing some leaves over time as the plant ages so the way to keep it bushy and nice and full on how I kept my Brazil philodendron nice and bushy which a lot of people tell me like it's so bushy I'm like I know it's because I propagate it a lot giving your Brazils or just giving your philodendrons and put those a haircut um, and using those cuttings to make more plants more free plants and making money or give them to friends or family or to just giving them away it actually benefits you and it benefits the plants it makes it a lot more bushy it makes it a lot more full which some of us like and other people just like the leggy look which is perfectly fine but if you want to keep your resident dendron bushy give it some haircuts don't be shy and cut some stems not from the bottom okay from the bottom <laughs> yes what you want to cut and it will push out new growth on top which is honestly really really fun and it makes it look beautiful and gorgeous so that's basically on how i take care of my brazil philodendron i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please give it a big thumbs up and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye